As chance would have it, after wandering the vast Milky Way galaxy, our two atoms both happened on the fiery birth of a small solar system. Ours. Our carbon atom has traveled far to become part of a small planet. After billions of years, it joined an extremely complex molecule, which has the peculiar property of making virtually identical copies of itself. The carbon atom plays its tiny role in the origin of life. Through all its incarnations, our carbon atom has had no self-awareness, no free will. It is merely an extremely minor cog in some vast cosmic machinery working in accord with the laws of nature. And that other atom, the uranium atom made in the supernova, what has become of it? Our world was born in fire, and this tiny atom was drawn to it. Maybe it rode the explosive wave of a supernova, or perhaps it was attracted by the gravity of our sun and pulled down deeper and deeper into the interior which was even more of a hell. The Earth's surface soon cooled, but the interior remained molten. The magma slowly circulated, and our uranium atom found itself carried over the ages from the deep interior back all the way up to the surface. Despite the high temperatures and pressures deep within the Earth, our atom's integrity was never threatened. Atoms are small, old, hard, and durable. Everything is made of atoms, including us. But until the last years of the 19th century, we didn't know about the frenzied activity inside the atom. And this is where our two atoms from opposite ends of the Milky Way galaxy finally met. It happened in Paris. carbon atom became part of the retina of one of the world's greatest scientists. This was just a few years after the discovery of x-rays. Marie Curie and her husband and research partner Pierre wanted to know how a piece of matter could make it possible to see through skin and even walls. The knowledge that there were rare places in the world where rocks rich in uranium possessed these strange properties inspired Marie on her scientific quest. The dull brown ore, still mixed with pine needles, came from the part of Eastern Europe that is now the Czech Republic. But this material was very rare, and even to distill a tiny amount of it required the most lengthy and labor-intensive efforts. She was later to write, we lived in our single occupation as in a dream. They worked under the worst possible conditions to purify the ore into a mineral called pitch blend, which was 50 to 80% uranium. This was quite an achievement, but Marie and Pierre were hunting for something far more rare. It took them three years to process tons of ore to isolate a mere tenth of a gram of a substance she named radium. Marie and Pierre had discovered a completely new element. The Curies showed that the radium was entirely unaffected by extreme temperatures. That was strange. Most things subjected to such intense heat would change drastically. And there was something else. It spontaneously emitted energy, not through chemical reactions, but through some unknown mechanism. Marie Curie called this new phenomenon radioactivity. 
She and Pierre calculated the energy that spontaneously flowed from a lump of radium would be much greater than burning the same amount of coal. Radioactivity, to their astonishment, was millions of times more potent than chemical energy. The difference between liberating the energy that resides in molecules and the far greater power stored deeper down. Between Marie, Pierre, little Irene, and the man she would later marry, the family would win five Nobel Prizes in science. The bottles, tubes, and flasks of pitch blend that they had refined left a residue of radium particles. They were so potent that they lit up the lab at night. As Marie wrote years later, they were like earthly stars, these glowing tubes in that poor rough shack. 